please stand and join in singing number 881, Lift High the Cross. and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Well, welcome everyone. I think it's going to get a little warmer today, so luckily we have a nice air-conditioned church this morning. And of course, welcome to all of you on this Labor Day weekend. As Joe would say, welcome to everyone who doesn't have a cabin. Uh, so <laughs> we form a group of, uh, of a fellowship of our own. Uh, and today, of course, we celebrate our uh, ordinary time and God is asking us to take up our crosses. And in a special way, we also offer this mass in loving memory of Bernard Tobias, the father of uh, Peter. So we hold the Tobias family in our prayers uh, and we pray for uh, the repose of the soul of Bernard. And so as we come together, as we prepare to celebrate this Eucharist, let us take a moment to call to mind our own lives and ask for God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you walk with us in life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you give us the gift of new life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you welcome us into the arms of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. God of might, river, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am, I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will, not spe I will speak his name no more. But then it becomes like a fire burning in my heart imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, 
to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Or what can one give in exchange for their life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to their conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. In my house, we were talking the other night that a number of my fellow Dominican priests all have weddings this weekend. Three of them have weddings this weekend. So I guess it's kind of a big wedding uh, holiday, Labor Day. And as we were talking about weddings, I always think back to a story that I heard at a wedding uh, years ago. This is before I even became a, a priest. And the story was given during the homily. And the story goes that one day there was a rabbi who went out for a walk one afternoon. And as he was walking, he came to a lake, and he saw a young man there at the lakeside. So he he went up to the young man, and he asked him, you know, what are you doing? And the young man said, oh, I'm fishing. And the rabbi looked at him and said, well, why are you fishing? And the young man said, well, I love fish. You know, it's obvious. He must have been from Minnesota, I guess. And the rabbi paused for a moment, then he looked out at the lake, and he looked back at the young man. He said, you love fish, huh? Is that why you put a hook on the end of your rod, and you put some bait on that hook, and then you cast it into the lake, hoping to trick a fish to bite down on the hook? And then as soon as you have a fish on your hook, you reel it out of the lake, and then you knock it against a rock, and then you cut it open, and you clean it, and then you cook it and you eat it. You do that because you love the fish, huh? And the rabbi said, no, you don't love the fish. You love what the fish gives to you. You love the pleasure that eating the fish gives you. You might even love the the process of capturing the fish. You don't love the fish. You really love yourself, and you're really loving yourself through this fish. 
And in the homily, the priest continued, he said that it's fine if we love fish with a kind of fish love. It's even fine if we love, you know, other food with a fish love for the, the pleasure, or for the, the nutrients it gives us. Or maybe we can love our car this way, or our house, or our TV, or our clothes. You know, those are all fine. But when it comes to the important things in life, when it comes to marriage, for example, fish love won't do. If a spouse only loves their partner for the things that they give to them, if they only love them for the things that they offer to them, then that's a very shallow love. It's not a real love. Rather, in marriage and in many of our relationships, we don't need fish love. We need a higher form of love. We need a love not of what you can give to me, but a love of, for who you are. Even a, a love that is an outpouring, a giving of oneself to the other. And this kind of love is the love that, uh, that God offers to us. But I think within each and every one of us, we have this struggle between fish love and, and pure love, selfless love. Or you might even rephrase it. We have a tension between my self-preservation and my giving of myself. A tension of, you know, how do I serve myself versus how do I serve others? And this tension is, is felt, I think, in all of our readings this weekend, especially going to our first reading from the prophet Jeremiah. You know, it's a wonderful passage. I love it. Jeremiah is talking to God, and he's like, you duped me. You tricked me. You know, I didn't know this was going to happen when I became a prophet. And I think it's fair to say that Jeremiah is having a bad day. You know, <laughs> he's, he's going through some hard stuff. You know, he's been mocked by people. He's been ridiculed. He's been cursed at. He's even had stones thrown at him. He's been arrested. He's, he's really gone through quite a bit. And you can tell that he's fed up. And he says, you tricked me, Lord. And you know what? I'm not going to speak about you anymore. I'm not going to talk about you anymore. You can see he's trying to preserve himself, perhaps understandably so. He wants to preserve his life. But then he says, but every time I, I try to not speak, every time I close my mouth, what happens but like a fire begins to burn within me. This desire to speak, to, to speak about God, begins to consume him until he finally can't keep it inside anymore, and he has to speak. He has to say something. He has to do something, even though he knows it, it might end up in more hardship for himself. He's struggling with that tension of self-preservation versus offering of himself. In the same way, Jesus offers the same thing to his apostles in the gospel. You know, he's pulled them aside and he begins to explain to them. He has kind of a Bible study and he's like, see, all of the prophets predicted that one day I would come, but then they also said that I would die, that I would struggle with the chief priests and the scribes, that I would be arrested and I would be executed. But then don't worry, because on the third day I'm going to rise again. And understandably, his apostles are a little uh, unsatisfied. They're a little disturbed by this news. And it's Peter who pulls Jesus aside and you know, he's the only one, I think, in the scriptures that actually rebukes Jesus, who actually scolds Jesus and says, don't say that. That won't happen. I'm not going to let that happen. And Peter, I think, is speaking from that same desire for self-preservation. He's afraid of what would happen to himself if Jesus were to die. He's afraid of upsetting the status quo. He's afraid even of letting go of his friend Jesus. And so he's speaking out of this desire for self-preservation. But to this, Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. You are becoming an obstacle to me. And he says to him, you are not thinking as God does, but you're thinking as human beings do. In other words, you're thinking like fish love when you should be thinking about a kind of God love. For Jesus knows that for Peter and for the rest of his followers, that to, to be followers, to to receive full life, to receive this joy that God wants to offer to them, they have to move beyond this kind of self-preservation. They have to move beyond their fears, and they have to be willing to even sacrifice, willing to take up their cross, willing to endure perhaps ridicule or hardship. And Jesus isn't saying, you know, take up your cross and follow me because he is a sadist. You know, he doesn't want people to suffer for the sake of suffering. He doesn't want people to, to, to be troubled. 
but he also knows that in life, to find this true love, to find this true peace, to find ourselves, it often requires sacrifice. It often requires hardship. And that if we always avoid it in our life, if we always go in the other direction, if we always choose the easy thing, then we won't discover the greatness that is in store for us. We won't discover the greatness that God has in store for each and every one of us. You know, St. Paul says the same thing. He says, you know, be transformed by the renewal of your minds, but do this by offering your very selves as a living sacrifice. Offering yourselves by doing what God is asking you to do, by willing to love even if you're not loved in return, by willing to show kindness and mercy, to stand up for justice, even if it means uh, consequences, even if it means being ridiculed, even if it means that we are, are struggling. But to do these things, not because of what it gives to us, but because it's the right thing. To do it because by doing so, we live up to what God is calling for us. And by doing this, we walk with God, but also God walks with us. By taking up our crosses, by seeing that every single person sitting beside us, every single person we encounter is carrying their own cross, has their own burdens. By seeing that all of us are in this together, we can help one another carry our crosses and help people to find that true peace, that true joy, that true greatness. You know, there's a poem that Pope Francis uh, used in one of his letters, and I can't recall the poem uh, from the beginning, but it basically says that if to have what I have now, if to love like I love now, I first had to lose, I first had to have my heart broken, then I count myself lucky. To discover in life the greatest joys, the greatest loves, the greatest presence of God, if first we had to suffer hardship, if we had to suffer heartbreak, that we found it in the end, then it, it, all, it is all worth it. And in the end, God is inviting us to lose ourselves, to offer ourselves, and discover the greatness that God has in store for us, the great love that God has called us to, and in the end, the great peace that God gives to us as well. For we are not strangers, but friends of God, and we are loved by God. And God, through every moment of our life, wants us to find this love, to love us not with that fish love, but with that true human love, the love that gives and the love that sacrifices, but the love that conquers all things. And so, so let us now stand and profess the faith that unites us as one. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us place our prayers and petitions before a loving and generous God. May God protect the work of sanctuary churches and social services who provide aid to undocumented immigrants, we pray to the Lord. Lord our May God support all those impacted by fires, floods, hurricanes, and other natural disasters, we pray to the Lord. May God foster the efforts of scientists, medical researchers, and all who are working to combat the spread of infectious diseases, we pray to the Lord. Lord May God bless the lives and lands of indigenous peoples around the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord 
We hold before God all who have asked for our prayers, including Brian Arvold, Kathy Daly, Lori Mandery, Jean Miller, Patty Mandarin, Christine Shaw Johnson, Robert Ward, Gloria Mose, Rita Bach, Peter Hamburg, Jackie Getch, Christopher Blazewich, Jeanette Blazewich, Susan Ward, Mike Purvis, Dave Snyder, and Connie Cole, along with those who wish their names to be private, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died in the peace of Christ, including Mary Lou Flandrick, Lenore Jessness, and in a special way for Bernard Tobias, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And for the prayers that we keep deep in the silence of our hearts, And for one another, we pray to the Lord. God, you invite us to take up our crosses. Give us, Lord, the strength of your grace and help us to know that we are loved. We ask this in all things in Jesus who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please join in singing number 782, Only This I Want. that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, O Lord, we hum- and at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord, my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he gave thanks and blessed the chalice, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Phoebe 
and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And so at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer to one another a sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
please join in singing Take and Eat, number 950. Thank you. 
let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, O Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, you can see in the bulletin uh, information about how you can become a catechist for our upcoming uh, Edge of Faith Formation year for our young, uh, young adults and young children. Um, we will have a blessing of the catechists on September 17th, and we'll also have a short uh, kind of reflective retreat on that day as well for all catechists as well, so you can find more information on that in the bulletin. Next Sunday is our donut weekend, and also we're having a ministry fair as well. So uh, after Mass downstairs, we'll have uh, different, all the different ministries and offerings that we have in the parish, uh, different tables where you can find out more information and sign up. Uh, so it will be a wonderful uh, opportunity to kind of see the, what was going on in the parish as well as enjoy some donuts as well. Um, and other than that, we're getting ready. Uh, mark your calendars for October 1st. We're having our roast beef dinner, uh, which includes bingo and a lot of other fun things. So uh, stay tuned for more information about as that as well. And other than that, I hope you enjoy your, uh, your Labor Day weekend if you have tomorrow off. Uh, we have Mass here at 8.15, which you're welcome to join. Uh, but otherwise, we hope you enjoy the, the wonderful weekend. And I guess it's also our last chance to do the state fair. So if you haven't gotten your pronto pups, now is the chance to do that. So, <laughs> But uh, thank you, everyone, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. Number 680, We Walk by Faith.
person that's still around the corner. Oh, are you John? <laughs> oh, there's only so many people. I know. <laughs> So it was fun to play the melody on the verse, for, on the, like the, one of the verses of um, the Tide of Crops. And so then it was kind of, you know, it was, it was well defined. And then you were doing the accompaniment. And then to come back and play a strong, full accompaniment, it's like, you know, coming in with the work and stops. You know. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it's about. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that we're going to close.